try out the new tables because it's really nice to finally have just like normal tables and they're great to work with. All right, welcome back everyone. This is going to be a quick tutorial about the new tables in Miro. And if you've used grids before, it's similar, but now it's like an official tables tool. So to start things off, we're going to add a table to our board. And doing that is pretty simple. We go to our apps, so we go to the three dots, and then you can see tables is already laid out. Now, if you're going to use tables a lot, you might as well just grab it and dock it into your tools palette. So it's always there. So we're just going to do a three by three. And when you click that, you see that little table icon. Just click anywhere on the board itself and it's going to drop the table. So to add a column or a row, you can see you have these big plus signs. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You just click that to add a column or you click here down here to add a row. If you want to delete a row or column, you can click on this column piece here. Uh, you can see two icons appear. This three dots, click that, you'll select the whole thing. Then you can click delete column here. You can also just hit the delete key on your keyboard to delete it. Now the delete key and the backspace key, they work a bit differently in tables. So if you have some text in here, and you select the whole thing and do backspace, you're just gonna delete the content. If you want to delete the whole row, you hit Dell on your keyboard and it deletes the whole row. There's also other ways to add uh, rows or column. So if you are in a cell, you can see these little icons here. So if you click A+, plus, let's again add some content, A, B, C. So if you wanna add a column, you can click this add column icon and it's going to add one column after the one you have selected and the same goes with the rows as well just add rows like that so now we have this big table with nothing in it uh, let's have a look at how we can start populating our table so first thing we're going to do we're going to add some text that makes more sense in a table so for this one we're going to add for example, a user, so user A, and then just hit tab to go to the next column, user B, sorry, cell, and user C, the next cell in the next column. So we have three users here, and we're gonna get some data, that would be name, and then age, like that. I know you can see that they're small, you can't really see them. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna go to my table and I'm gonna add some, uh, or I'm gonna edit the attributes for my font. So 36, that's a bit too big, maybe 24. I'm gonna center everything like that. And then they're gonna go bold. Maybe even, uh, let's do 32. There we go. And now you can also see that whenever you add new text now, so if a user A is called Bill, it's gonna inherit the same style. So let's just add three names. It's gonna be Bill, Jill, and Juliet. And then their age is gonna be 28, 19, and 23. Now, if you wanna change these, you can just shift drag to change these selected ones. So you can see that you still have the text attributes on your selected. So you might wanna get those down to like 24 and you maybe you wanna kill the bold. Now you can see that you have a like a heading and some data. If you need to alter the width of a row or a column, you can do what you've always done in other software. You just drag to place these uh, the way you want them to. There we go. All right, you might wonder why these are here. And the only reason for this is to showcase merging of cells. So to merge cells, you just drag select the ones you want. I'm just holding shift to get this square that selects all the cells. And then this icon here, merge the cells like that. So maybe this is a user database. 
Now to make this a bit more interesting, you can also change colors of the cells. So if you select the whole table, you can of course alter the, the border or the lines, and you can also alter the background of all the cells in that table. So now we, we made everything white, but if you select a single cell, you can also change the background of that single cell. So maybe we want to do bold, get that back up there and change the color of the heading like that. And in these, maybe we want like a second level. So we can select these and do like a dark gray like that. So whenever we add a row or column now, you can see it's going to inherit these changes that we've done. The only thing that you might need to update is the merging of the cells like that. Now, of course, there's more than text you can add here. Uh, when you double click a cell, you add text in the cell. So you're just editing the cell itself. If you need a text element in the cell, you can add a text element like this text element and uh, just get this up to 24. Maybe just add another uh, another font so it's easy to see. And then you can drop it into the cells like that. So if I move the table around now, it's going to live inside that cell. So if we duplicate that here, now there aren't that much you can do with a text element that you can't really do with this one. You have the basics of the text, uh, text attributes, but there are a few things like you can make lists or links, but you can also link elements together like that. So if that's a need, uh, maybe you need to, I don't know, in this case, it's, it looks a bit weird, but maybe you need to link to text elements. So that's one way you can do that. And another thing as well with these tables is that you can add other elements. So you would probably add something like a sticky note and then drag that into place like that. Maybe you're doing like a, a research and you figure out that Juliet is a potential buyer or something like that. We can even link this text element all the way down to this. And another thing as well that's really nifty with the tables is if we have multiple items like this and we grab all of them and we want to drop them into a cell like that, you can see that the cell will expand. But if you don't want that, you can just hold command control on Windows and then that will disappear. So if you do want it, just drag it over there and it's going to be there by default. One last thing that we're going to look at if you've been using Miro for a while, you might know that you can copy paste from Excel or uh, Google Sheets. And when you do that, if you if you paste in a few cells, it's going to create sticky notes. So let's do that first. Now, this is just some research that I've done earlier on uh, Medium Writers. I'm going to grab maybe just like a few rows. So eight rows with the heading and everything. So I'm going to copy that. And then when I go back into Miro and I just hit paste, it's going to all be sticky notes. And that's fine. I mean, I've used that a lot. But now with tables, you can actually get visual table data based on what you're pasting in. So let's create a new table. I can just create a one by one. And then when I have this selected and I hit paste, it's going to paste in all of this. All right. I hope you learned something about tables today. If you don't have Miro installed already, just click the link in the description below. That's my affiliate link. Uh, and have a go yourself. If you have used Miro before, try out the new tables because it's really nice to finally have just like normal tables and they're great to work with. Hopefully you learned something. It's quite simple. It's basically normal tables. Remember to subscribe if you want more of this in the future. I'll keep making these videos and I hope to see you back next time.